Pastor Greg Locke, probably one of the most controversial pastors out there. You know, usually with Christians, you see them either love this guy or the complete opposite, right? They can't stand him. But no matter how you may feel about Greg Locke, his, his teachings, his checkered past, the one thing that nobody should want to see happen is what happened to Greg Locke and his family on Tuesday night, September 3rd. Because Greg Locke took to social media and informed everybody about what was an absolutely horrific situation that took place at his own home. In fact, it took place just minutes before Greg Locke and his family arrived back at the house. We're going to get into all the details of this here in just a second. I'm going to give you my insight as well. But before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind and how do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help me out, there's multiple ways you could do that now. One, by hitting the super thanks button on the YT video. You could become a monthly contributor by joining the Patreon, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. That link is in the description. And you could also help us out with our GoFundMe. The GoFundMe link is in the description of this video and all videos. Now, why are we doing a GoFundMe? Well, I've shared with you guys, it was in August, my wife only... 39 years old, unfortunately, suffered a stroke. And no, I have to say this all the time, she did not take the juice, if you know what I mean. Because a lot of people were just making assumptions, knowing her medical history, that they just said, oh, that's what happened. I'm like, you don't even know who she is, so just stop saying ignorant things. So yeah, I have to say this now every time because it's the, the, the it keeps coming up in the comment section all the time. Uh, it was determined that she actually had endocarditis. There was a vegetation buildup on her heart, which doctors say a piece of that broke off to the brain, which caused the stroke. Uh, now, fortunately, she did not have many side effects from it. She did have a little weakness in her arm, her left arm. It hit in the front, uh, the right frontal lobe, uh, as well as uh, a little bit of drooping on the left side of her face. Uh, praise God, most of that has now already healed up. And she's basically, you know, 95% recovered from the effects of what happened. Uh, however, with that, she has to be on antibiotics for about six weeks to go after the vegetation buildup to make sure we can get that completely dissipated. But after spending a week in the hospital and only being home for two days, we had to go right back to the hospital again. She ended up developing a reaction. Her body had like a shock, you know, an, an ambulance shock uh, to the medication that she was on. She ended up swelling up like a balloon. It was one of the scariest things and, and, and it was just, it is, it, it's been an incredibly rough road for us. Uh, me as a husband having to, to, to witness all that she has had to go through. She's now on a new set of antibiotics, which she'll be on again for the next six weeks. But our medical bills are really stacking up on us right now, as well as regular bills. My wife's gonna be out of work for a considerable amount of time. So it's kind of all on me right now. And you know, we're just trying to keep the lights on. At this point so anything you are able to do to help us out if you guys you know if you've enjoyed my ministry at any point you know you've watched me for any length of time you appreciate these videos you just want to help out because of that again the gofundme you, you can help out because you want to help us with our you know our stacking bills and everything else the gofundme link again is in the description or again you could do patreon you can do the yt super thanks it all adds up and we are so appreciative to all of you for your prayers for your donations your kind words we read them all it's helping us out so much during what has been a very difficult time. I'm getting back into the swing of things again, you know, back at work, providing video updates for you guys. So again, we, we love you all and thank you again so much for all you're doing to help us out. All right, let's get into this. Greg Locke, I, I've said my piece on him before. I used to really like Greg Locke. I, I did. Um, but then really over the last couple of years, I have seen him just kind of go downhill and almost become more of this cult leader type of a guy. You know, he was really hardcore into the politics there for a while. And then he kind of made this switch, right, to deliverance ministry. And he started teaming up with 
a lot of questionable individuals within that movement. Uh, Isaiah Saldivar, just to name one, but others as well. Uh, Locke got very focused in on, you know, exercising demons and and actually doing this with <clears throat> multiple events at his church, you know, where they were, you know, doing deliverance ministry and all of it. And I said at the time, it was just kind of one thing for Greg Locke to, you know, move out of the politics and then sink his teeth into something else. Uh, you know, the, the, the calling out the witches in the church. I, I always thought that he was kind of going too extreme with things, the, the book burnings that he would do at the church as well, uh, assuming that so many members of his church would just were just having these random occult items laying around. I, I just, I thought he was going too, too extreme with everything. And he was almost inviting a, a lot of this negative attention. I know he's never really cared, but for so many people, you know, that would flock to his church, it wasn't necessarily because, you know, what's he going to preach about? What's, how is he going to, you know, interpret the word of God to us today? No, it was about what's he going to do? What sort of crazy thing is Greg Locke going to do today? That's really the appeal of him, right? He's this you know, this larger than life character, this big personality, right? That, you know, people love him. He's off the cuff. He says what he wants. You know, he just, he goes out loud. And, and again, I know a lot of people still love him, you know, and I just, I, I would hope that the guy could, you know, tone it down and, and, and just, you know, repent of all this stuff and, and just get himself straight again with the Lord. I don't hate him. I don't, Nothing like that. I would never want to see anything bad happen to him, which is which we're going to talk about now. Uh, because, you know, again, you can even, there's people, you know, we, we've talked about before, you know, how, you know, he left his first wife for the church secretary. And there's that whole deal as well. So there's a lot there that, you know, I have said, and I know many agree with me, and there's some that don't, that he has, he's really disqualified from being a pastor, for, for being in ministry. Maybe he's suited more for something like politics. But it's just my take. Again, I know a lot of other believers. And again, your people are very split on Greg Locke. But the one thing I think that no matter how we may feel about a pastor, a preacher, a minister, whatever, we should all be in agreement that what happened to Greg Locke and his family on Tuesday, September 3rd should have never happened. It's absolutely horrible. I condemn it in every way that you can imagine. So let's talk about it. Greg Locke puts a post out on his social media. Uh, it was late Tuesday night, September 3rd, early morning, Wednesday, September 4th. And he talked about how him and his family had been out. They get home and they find that their house, Greg Locke's truck, have been just riddled with bullets. In fact, they found out that about 50 rounds were fired at his home and his truck about a minute prior because they looked at the security camera and they looked at the video and it showed, in fact, a drive-by taking place at his home about a minute before they got there. Can you imagine had they been in the house, had they had just maybe gotten to the home at the same time that the drive-by happened, they may not be here today because of this. Now we know that Greg Locke has received a number of threats among the years from people that have said that they would do something like this to him, right? He's gotten all sorts of weird things in the mail from people because again, you know, he's, you know, getting in the trenches and calling, you know, wit the witchcraft and all this. And again, I, I think he, he pushes too hard on that, but, but I will again, maintain what I said. He did not, no one deserves this. This should not happen. Okay. And I know there's, believe it or not, there's even some Christians that would celebrate this and that's sick. That's absolutely sick to do something like that. You should never in any way take any sort of delight and joy, even if you disagree with someone's preaching, when something like this happens. So Greg Locke, again, he, he says this. They, they get there a minute after, right? The home, 50, at least 50 rounds that were fired. Police had shown up to the home. Greg Locke even, and here's the thing. One of his youngest kids was actually in the home at the time that it happened, at the time that the drive-by happened. Fortunately, they were not harmed. Thank God. Thank God. But Greg Locke even posted photos from inside the house, and he showed that there was a bullet hole that was in the headboard of one of his kids' beds. How scary is that? Can you imagine what that little one must have felt like being there in the home, right? The family's gone. The family was out somewhere. They're all alone. 
and this drive-by happens again 50 rounds fired at the home imagine how they must have felt how how scared how terrified that they must have been when this took place now because of what happened greg Locke said that him and his family they were escorted by security to a nearby hotel they stayed the night in the hotel that night no in the, uh, no other information was given at the time as, as far as, as the time i'm recording this there's been no arrests made uh in this in this case um and the only thing that greg Locke said that he could say is that you know well, for one pray for the Locke family but also that psalm 91 uh, truly protect them again no one harmed that's the the greatest thing about this of course things can be replaced repairs can be made to homes to vehicles right or they can even re be replaced but you can't replace people you can't replace people uh this is a very very scary situation and i'm sure there'll be more updates and if there are I'll, I'll bring them to you uh if in fact there's any arrests made in this case but uh, i just want to point out again something that we should all and i know it ain't always going to happen but it's my hope at least that the one thing that we can all come together as far as believers i mean look the world's the world and and, and they're those that have hated gray lock and they don't like him for what he does they love what's happened here okay i'm not talking about those people but i'm talking about believers we should all be able to come together and condemn something like this when it happens to uh, really anybody you know but 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 somebody too that calls himself and i do believe that he is still disqualified from ministry but that doesn't mean he can't be a believer that doesn't mean he can't have a relationship with christ that doesn't mean he can't be you know forgiven okay is that that's what christ did on the cross okay so we should be able to come together and, and pray for his family uh for their peace and for their safety and, and also that you know greg Locke would would turn from you know these new false teachings that he's getting into you know he, he recently befriended benny hinn somebody that he was adamantly against for the majority of his time in ministry and i talked about that i believe it was last year in a video you know he was on benny hinn's show and benny hinn who's been in the headlines a lot as of late right that he's getting back into the prosperity gospel again his wife just filed for divorce for a second time uh, so he's you know buddying himself up to a, a lot of a lot of wolves and that's not a good thing but you know what god spared him god spared greg Locke, spared his entire family with what happened here and that shows you how good he is look make no, make no mistake about it god may not like the actions of greg Locke, who he's you know buddying up with and 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 the types of teachings and everything that he's getting into but he still loves him at the end of the day see that's who our savior is despite what we do despite what we say despite who we hang around with he still loves us unconditionally and he still shows us that mercy that's amazing to me but i want to hear from you guys on this sound off down below in the comments section maybe you're somebody who's a member of global vision bible look even if you disagree with me if you're you're someone that that truly loves Locke and his teachings look hopefully we can have peaceful discussion no, no name calling none of that's needed we don't need to be doing that to each other okay but i want to hear from you do, do you at least agree with me that as believers we should be able to come together in these sorts of situations and pray for individuals like greg Locke and his family when this sort of thing happens we should again be able to come together as believers and condemn this so i want to hear from you you guys can let me know your thoughts in the comment section and don't forget again if you enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute to the ministry here with the donation where we have multiple ways from you can do the gofundme the link is in the description that helps out me and my wife net right now and as we're you know recovering everything my wife went through with her stroke and stacking bills and all of that you can do the patreon that's in the description as well or just do the super thanks on the yt video it all helps it all adds up and makes a big difference and we love you all for it what i want to do right now something i do on all these videos let's end this video on hope it's part of my ministry outreach this is an altar call i've been doing this on my videos since 2016 no matter what it is that i'm discussing in the church exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits we always want to give people the opportunity to receive christ as savior that being said anybody watching now if you are somebody who has not yet received jesus as lord and savior you would like to do so i want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now this is a prayer you could do in your own words but i will give you the steps you need to bring it before the lord 
today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.